Preventative maintenance on the plasma cutter, just as important as any of the other preventative maintenance videos you've watched. Number one thing, cleanliness. Remember, these are computerized machines, they have connectors, they have fans, they don't like dirt and grime. Now at first glance, this might not even look too bad. That's pretty clean, Mark, but watch this. If I just take my hand on this cable, look at this grime. And it's like an oily, nasty, sticky grime. It's because this hasn't been wiped down in a long time. So I'm just gonna show you how you want to leave this machine for the next person that comes in and hopefully that person will leave it clean for the person afterwards. When we perform <clears throat> preventative maintenance on these machines, they last longer, they run more consistently, and you get more time using it as opposed to working on it, fixing something that's wrong with it. So these machines are pretty robust. They'll run for years, but I want to just go through how you need to leave this once you're done with it. And we start off with blowing it off with air. We get in the valves. Remember, anytime we have louvers or anytime we have openings, those are for cooling the machine. We want to make sure that that stuff doesn't have obstructions in dirt. I got a little in the back, I'm going to blow off. Louvers on the side. Now the other thing to keep in mind that you can't see in here because we have these in another room is we have big oil and water traps, filters on our air compressor. It's very important to keep clean air running into these machines. You will greatly reduce the wear on the machine with clean air. The cuts will be better. Everything is better with clean air. Those are in the other room with the compressors. Next what I'm going to do is take a simple green, a cleaner, and I'm just going to spray a rag down and run down this cable. And this doesn't need to be done every time this machine is used, but it needs to be done when you grab this cable and you see that it's nasty and gnarly and dirty. So I just run through this thing. It only takes a minute and it's much nicer to grab this torch when you walk in this room and it's a nice clean torch. We always want to inspect Again, the housing, make sure there's no big cuts, make sure there's no slices in the cables. We'll just look it over quick. Turn it back and forth. You can see the texture in there. These things do get wear on them. But as long as we don't see any cables exposed, and I've already looked the rest of this thing over, so I know that it's pretty good. Just take a quick look at that. Next, we move to the ground clamp, the work clamp. We want to, first of all, make sure that the connections are tight. There's a loose jaw right there. So there's another loose jaw. So what we would want to do is put a wrench on these and tighten these things up because again, it's an electrical connection and anytime you have a loose electrical connection, you're asking for problems. The main one seems tight, but the jaws need to be tightened up. I look the cable over and I have already went through this whole one too, but we look this over to make sure that there's no slices, there's no cuts. It only takes a minute. Nobody wants to do it, but everybody needs to do it. Then I can put my simple green and clean this cable off. This is definitely something you do not want on any cables on any welding machines. Never tie knots in them. You have to watch and make sure because these cables are long and they get coiled up on the floor. We never, ever, ever want knots tied in electrical cable. So we make sure we get all of those out of there. Wipe it down a little bit. With our simple green cleaner. Now, 
We've blown the thing off. We've wiped the cables down and inspected them. We've checked our connections. Now I'm just going to take a little bit and wipe down the front of the machine. Just a quick rundown. These little dials and these little buttons, if they get dirt in them, they can really wreak havoc. They can cost time and money, but most importantly, now we have a plasma cutter that isn't working, so you can't get as much work done as you want to. Pretty simple, not bad. One last thing I want to talk about is the consumables on the end of the tip. So if we take this apart and we look at these parts of this torch, we can set that down here and I'm going to bring these right over here on the top of the machine and see if we can get a good visual of them. We have these components we have these components in our storage cabinet. Now if you look, the size of that hole, remember this is where our plasma column comes out of. That's the size of the hole and you can see how that hole's flared out. It's not bad, but you can see how it's flared out. That means your plasma column is going to be not as accurate and not as consistent as with new consumables. This electrode is not bad either. You see the little divot in the end of it. Sometimes these things will be burned down a quarter of an inch or burned in half. This is the electrode that makes electrical connection to this, creates the arc that melts the metal. So this one isn't bad, but let me just grab some new ones and show you the difference. Now these are brand new ones. And you can see that they have no divot in the end of them. And the biggest one, the most important one, is this nozzle. You can see the difference of the size of the hole is that one and that one. This one even looks like it's coming out to the side a little bit. So if you're looking for really accurate, clean cuts, precision cuts, make sure that your end consumables are at least in this condition. These ones really aren't bad. I was hoping they were burned out more to give you a better visual, but these ones are brand new. If the nozzle, the hole is oblong or melted off, if the electrode is melted down, these things just will not cut. They'll still cut the metal, but they won't cut precision clean cuts like they should. These are consumables. They need to be changed out. So every once in a while, you need to check them, change them out. Go ask your instructor, hey, where do I find these things? And they're going to show you in our storage room where these are. That goes down in like this. We take the nozzle and we slide it down in the retaining ring. That goes right on here like this. Tighten that up. And then we put the last part on. And now we have nice, tight, clean, brand new consumables that will make an incredibly nice cut. So, preventative maintenance on the plasma cutter, not a real big deal. Keep them clean. You don't want to spend time working on these machines. You want to spend time working with them. All of us have our part to do to maintenance these things. Keep them clean. Keep good consumables on them. Make sure there's no cuts in the cords. They will last longer, and you will be much happier when you come in to get your work done.